We all see it, the moon. We are all taught that it is a rock, a satellite of the earth. Humans have set foot on it and picked up a few rocks to study. But do we dare to claim that we know for sure? How was the moon formed? Why does it have such an orbit? Science is not sure about that. There are a few theories, but they all seem to have problems that need to be solved. The first theory is that the moon was captured. It was floating in space and was unfortunately attracted to the Earth. This is very unlikely, and there is no evidence to support it. Isaac Asimov stated, it's too big to have been captured by the Earth. The chances of such a capture having been affected and the moon then having taken up nearly circular orbit around our Earth are too small to make such an eventuality credible. The second theory, the accretion theory, proposes that the moon was formed together with the Earth from clouds of gas and dust in the early days. However, did you know that moon rocks were dated at 5.3 billion years old, and the dust upon which they were resting was at least another billion years older? While the Earth is estimated to be 4.6 billion years old, and if the moon formed in this way, it should probably have an iron core like the Earth and rotate on its axis like the Earth, right? The third theory, the fission theory, proposes Earth spun so fast it flung out rock that became the moon, but scientists found that the crushed up rocks on the moon is of another world. Analysis has shown that the moon rocks are of a completely different composition to the soil around them. The most popular theory is the giant impact theory, where a Mars-sized object slammed into Earth and the debris formed the moon and Earth. However, this theory requires it to happen perfectly, perfectly to the point that after the collision, the moon is in a spherical shape, unlike any asteroid in space, perfectly to the point that the moon has a circular orbit and is tidally locked, not rotating around its axis. It is even placed at the perfect distance to cover the sun just right when a solar eclipse occurs. Isaac Asimov explains, there is no reason why the moon and the sun should fit so well. It is the sheerest of coincidences, and only the Earth is among all the planets blessed in this fashion. Do you think this is a coincidence? Or are you thinking about it being an artificial satellite? Maybe the moon is hollow, and there are aliens inside. I'm not sure about that, but the things we know are just a tiny grain of sand in the unknown. We should keep an open mind. Curiosity is essential for scientific development. Science is about making complex things simple and applying them to life, not holding on to a bunch of empty theories that are useless. If you agree that this is a pretty interesting idea, then let's discuss it. Let's start with the most visible thing, moon rocks. On Earth, the newest rocks are at the surface, and the rock gets older as you go deeper. This is obvious and logical, but on the moon, the soil on the surface is older than the rocks underneath, and the surface rocks are older than the rock underneath them. It's backwards. Normal planetary composition results in heavier elements in the core and lighter materials at the surface, not so with the moon. Moon rocks were magnetized. This is odd, because there is no magnetic field on the moon itself. This could not have originated from a close call with Earth. Such an encounter would have ripped the moon apart. The moon's mean density is 3.34 gilaminus per semna 3, whereas the Earth's is 5.5. Although the satellite is a quarter of Earth's 8,000 mile diameter, it only has 1.2% of the mass. Four moons should theoretically be equivalent to one Earth. In reality, it would take over 81 moons to produce our terrestrial world's total mass. What does this mean? Could the moon be hollow? In Carl Sagan's treatise, Intelligent Life in the Universe, the famous astronomer stated, a natural satellite cannot be a hollow object. In 1962, NASA scientist Dr. Gordon MacDonald stated, if the astronomical data are reduced, it is found that the data require that the interior of the moon is more like a hollow than a homogeneous sphere. Do you believe the moon is hollow? On November 20th, 1969, the Apollo 12 crew jettisoned the lunar module ascent stage, causing it to crash onto the moon. The LM's impact created an artificial moonquake with startling characteristics. The moon reverberated like a bell for more than an hour. This phenomenon was repeated with Apollo 13 triking with the equivalent of 11 tons of TNT. According to NASA, this time, the moon reacted like a gong. 
although seismic equipment was 108 miles from the crash site, recordings showed reverberations lasted for three hours and 20 minutes and traveled to a depth of 22 to 25 miles. It seems the moon has a tough outer shell, but a light or non-existent interior. The moon's crust is very unusual. It is much harder than expected. Remember the extreme difficulty the astronauts encountered when they tried to drill into the Maria? Surprise! The Maria is composed primarily elemonite, a mineral containing large amounts of titanium, the same metal used to fabricate the hulls of deep diving submarines and the skin of the SR-71 Blackbird. Uranium-236 and Neptunium-237 were discovered in lunar rocks, as were rust-proof iron particles. What intrigues people no less are the volcanoes. Their depths are all exactly the same. Why is that? With different sizes and forces of impact, the results should create different depths. But no, all holes measure an identical distance downwards at precisely four feet. It's as if a protective metallic barrier is shielding the globe's interior. Could this be an artificial Sputnik orbiting the Earth? And has the Earth ever had a time without a moon? Across continents, cultures with no known connection share stories of a time before the moon. Greek philosophers like Aristotle and Plutarch mentioned an era without the glowing orb in the sky. African, specifically Zulu legends, describe the moon as once resembling an egg with its yolk missing. Some tribes even believed this hollowed object was brought by advanced beings from beyond. Indigenous Colombian writings also speak of a pre-lunar civilization. Many of these diverse groups share a lament. The arrival of the celestial glowing sphere coincided with a terrible disaster that nearly wiped out humanity. The Earth's population supposedly shrank to a single race. Modern science confirms a single common ancestor for all humans, mitochondrial Eve. Could these ancient tales hold forgotten truths, echoes of events lost to time? Science tells us the moon is cold and lifeless. But there have been strange reports. On March 7, 1971, lunar instruments placed by the astronauts recorded a vapor cloud of water passing across the surface of the moon. The cloud lasted 14, 14 hours and covered an area of about 100 square miles. NASA, one year before the first lunar landing, reported 570 plus lights and flashes were observed on the moon from 1540 to 1967. NASA's Operation Moon Blink detected 28 lunar events in a relatively short period of time. On July 29, 1953, John J. O'Neill observed a 12 mile long bridge straddling the crater Mare Crisium. In August, British astronomer Dr. H.P. Wilkins verified its presence. One of the most curious features ever photographed on the lunar surface, Lunar Orbiter Photograph 384M, is an amazing spire that rises more than five miles from the sinus media region of the lunar surface. The hollow moon theory is certainly intriguing, and it does explain some of the moon's mysteries. However, science doesn't fully support it yet. The current explanations for the moon's features, while not perfect, do hold some weight. Hopefully, future exploration will shed more light on the moon's true story. What do you think about this? Is the moon hollow?